Abba. Yutai Vohei. Jehovah Yeshua, Moshiach. The truth. Our Father. That we can bend our knees this morning as a family. As a father. Speak to us. We need to hear that kind firm, loving voice. The voice of truth. The voice that is music. Music to our soul. Music to our spirit. It causes every fiber inside of us to dance. That causes our whole being to worship. We need, Lord, your voice. That voice that raised us from the dead. The voice that called us out of darkness. The voice that so many times, Lord, when we fell into a ditch, the voice that picks us up. So many times, Lord God, when we have chosen wrong ways, we're robbers has fell on us, will you come along and pick us up and heal and treat our wounds and feed us and give us new hope. Lord, we are glad to have you as our Father. We don't understand your way. But you give us so much to understand. Work in us this morning, we pray. Let every letter of your word find his purpose and her purpose inside of us. Teach us how to live purposefully. Teach us what it is all about. We can so easily be confused. Lord, by the many voices. But we ask you, Lord. You said your sheep shall know your voice. Lead us, Lord, with the staff. And if it's necessary, the prodder of your word. Drag us and pull us if it's necessary. Push us when we need it, Lord. But work in us that we will not be like mules. Allowing to be Influenced by our, by our stubborn flesh. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll never forget. That room where I was, 1976. And I came from the border. I was devastated in many ways. So lonely. So many questions. Such a great need. Buying that Bible. And that color pen. So I can make marks in my Bible. And 
try and find something from it. I was raised that you're not allowed to make a mark in the Bible. But I didn't care. I bought myself that nine millimeter pistol. And I said to God, it's me and you. If you do not show me the way, I will one day stand before your throne and say, I asked you, you didn't show me. When his voice came into that room, I crumbled. I crumbled when I met my father. And he said to me, I'll show you. I'll show you the way. I'll show you. Just keep on calling. You know, one day a farmer told me he lost a lamb. He was looking for the lamb. When it became dark, he knew he needed to find that lamb. And they walked around with lights and they calling and searching and they didn't find the lamb. And the next morning when the light came up, they found the lamb very close to where they were. And he said if the lamb only bleated, they would have found it. So if you are a lamb and you feel like a lamb this morning and you're a sheep, bleat, bleat. That's what one of the words mean, cry to the Lord. Bleat and tell the Father that you need to hear him. You need him to pick you up. He will carry you on his shoulder. Since that time, so many times, his voice has called me out of so many darknesses in my life. That's wonderful. So when I share with you the Continuance of last message, last time's message on the voice, on God's voice. You know as well as I know, trying to define God's voice, it's not really possible. You either hear his voice or you don't hear his voice. People make up his voice. People say God said. Many times people say God said and it wasn't God. Because there are many voices. If I read my Bible, there's the voice of the strange woman, there's the voice of the evil woman, there's, there's the voice of the stranger, there's the voice of the wolf, there's the voice of the hireling, there's the voice of many things. Many things are calling to you and me as you sit there, as I stand. You need we need to follow and know, discern his voice. Let's turn to Second Timothy chapter three. I'm going to read to you the verses we mentioned it last week. Second Timothy chapter three. Verse 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is profitable for doctrine. Doctrine is principles by which God works. Doctrine are the laws of the spiritual laws by which the spirit world works, in which we live. All doctrine is for reproof. If you and I do not allow that all doctrine reproves us, we cannot continue. All doctrine is for correction, 
So I must allow this morning for the doctrine and the principles that we're going to share to correct me. All doctrine is for instruction. So God doesn't leave us in the dark, but we need to study the scriptures to understand his doctrine, his reproof, his correction, and his instruction. He says there in verse 17, so that the man of God may be perfect. And I've shared with you that word previously, uh, previous times. It means to me. So the man of God can have integrity, which we seldomly find among ministers and pastors and people and Christians and definitely not among politicians. Right, so we can continue that way. And then last week, we just mentioned Psalm 32. Let's just turn to Psalm 32 as well. Psalm 32. Verse 8 and verse 9. Your father and my father says, I will instruct thee. And I will teach you in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be not as the horse or as the mule. Right. He says that he will teach us in the way. And last week we saw that the way is the word direct, and the way means purposeful life. He will teach you and me. What, a, what is a purposeful life? If you just become older than one year old, you discover that life has got no purpose. Sonne Lewis, die lieve Sonne Lewis, die woord van die Heere leer ons, wat maak die lewe sinvol? Wat bring sin en betekenis in die lewe? Waar oor gaan die lewe? I said to you before, every now and then I would say to my wife, did we have kids? Yes, we had kids. Are we grandparents? Yes, we grandparents. Did I work? Did I do my best? Yes, you did. How did we get here where we are now? Everything seems to be so vanity, sinless. Run around. Whatever your job is. Doesn't matter what your job is. Run around. After a while you think, what am I doing? What is it about? It's about finding the way. Because the moment we find the way, everything starts to become, an, uh, uh, the way adds value to everything. If we can put it that way. Meaning, that's right. But you know what I find among, among Christians is that they do not know his voice. Most of the times they don't know. They only start realizing that they, know, they need to know his voice when, when they need financial security. Then everybody's rock, walking around and saying, I, want to, I must hear from God. Because they want financial security. Uh, usually people need to hear his voice when they've made a mistake. Or when, they've, or being a, or when they had been a failure. And we don't always realize, and people do not always realize, that we always need to hear his voice. 
because we need to follow His voice constantly because that is what it is all about. Knowing His voice, learning to know His voice, hearing how His voice sounds, so I can follow Him day to day. When I read the Word of God, I need to hear His voice. Not the Scripture. Not studying the Scripture to know the person that walks in the midst of the Scripture. The living Word. That's the one I need to know. So I need to follow the shepherd all the time. And what do you follow of the shepherd? You follow his voice. The only way I can follow the shepherd is by following his voice. There's no other way of staying in the way. The only way to stay in the way is to follow the voice. And we say that way is the way which talks about God's will. It talks about the king's highway. It talks about purposeful living. It talks about understanding. It talks about common sense, but real common sense. It talks about understanding and intelligence. And when we learn about His voice, His voice is never forceful. How many, I would say many times that is the problem. <laughs> His voice is not forceful. He doesn't force Himself down on us. But His voice comes in instruction and in teaching and guiding us with His eye. But I cannot receive instruction if, you don't know, if I do not know His voice. I cannot receive teaching if I do not know His voice. Because there are a lot of teaching. There's a lot of teaching available. But if we continue, you will read with me just now in, uh, in John chapter 10, that there is a hireling, a yearling, a hireling, that doesn't speak the voice of the shepherd. From where does his voice proceed? His voice proceeds from his word. There are just two, there's two words for the word, the word that I would like just to share with you. So his voice, let me put it, do it this way, let's say his word, and from his word proceeds his voice. I don't know whether you know what the radio is. But we have a little, so the old man has said, a transistor, a radio, a draagbar. Okay. Draadloosie. So that draadloosie. And ons draadloosie gaan saam met ons betekje as ons gauw gauw koffie in die thee en die tuin drink. En ons draadloosie, as ons nie een draadloosie het nie, gaan ons nie die stem hoor van die, van die um, radiostasie wat ons wil hoor, die radio uitsending. Ons het een draadloosie nodig. Hier is jou draadloosie, hier is jou radio. You need this. So that you can open up at a specific meter band, and if you start tuning it, you will start hearing his voice coming through. Till you find the right the voice. You hear his voice. But you need this. So we need the word. Now, as I said, there's the word dobar, of davar. You can help me with the pronunciation. Uh, let me just write to you the spelling. It is dalet. And bet. And res. Okay. The only, the only time that you will take the word, the Bible into your hand is when you really know that you've got a great need. It's when you hear the voice 
of the Holy Spirit, you see, preceding the door. There's the voice calling in the wilderness. His voice, the voice of the Holy Ghost, is calling at you and me constantly. Constantly. And if I, uh, if I acknowledge my poverty and my need, then I will pick up the Word of God and I will read it so that the Word can find a habitation in me. If I start making it my habit, it will change my reasoning. And this word resh, I don't write it down, I'm actually busy with a second chart, <laughs> which is much more <laughs> complicated than this one. But anyway, the resh means when I return my reasoning to the beginning, all of us need constantly to return our way of reasoning back to the beginning, to the Father's feet, to Aleph, to His sovereignty. Because constantly in our thinking, we become afraid. We become doubtful. We start shaking. But if I take my reasoning back and say, He's sovereign. God is present. He's in control. It, 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 it takes the bend out of my reasoning. All right. From there, as I've been explaining, the voice comes. If you do, if you do this, His voice comes from there. And another word that you find many times with the word, uh, with the word word, is the word Omar. Kies, ek staan voor jy, as ek so skryf, maar ek sal altyd probeer pad gee weer. Omar, Omar is speld. Alef, Mem, en Resh. So when you take the word of God, because you acknowledge His sovereignty, Revelation will start flowing to you and you will see yourself in the midst of the Word as you read, as you see self and you see uh, more of the Son of God, see more of, of His sovereignty, it will change your reasoning. And when you go through that process, you will, process, you will hear His voice. I get you people my own Wat die chart by die huis, die, die kaart wat jy het, gaan kyk die betekenis van elkeen van die, maak dit een gebed van die hart en jy sal sy stem hoor. Hier is die elemente en komponente, soos wat jy, wanneer jy een radio oopmaak, when you open up a radio, you find in the radio different components, little wires and little things. If you take any of that out, anything that looks, that doesn't seem that it's needed there, if you take it out, the, 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 the radio doesn't work. You won't get any reception. So these are some basic components that you need to hear His voice. Any amens? Right. If I read the Bible, we can turn to 1 Kings chapter, 1, uh, 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. There where Elijah runs away from, from uh, uh, Jezebel. And... Elijah is comforted by the angel and then he carries on to the mountain and Elijah is devastated. And just a chapter before that he had miracles happening in his life. 
Can you believe that? The one moment God does miracles for you and you have this, this absolutely uh, supernatural experience with Him, and the next moment you need to hear His voice again. So when you hear His voice once, that's wonderful, but you, you're going to hear, you need to hear His voice. You, the second step that you take, you need to hear His voice once again. Right, so we read here uh, in 1, 1 Kings, sorry, let me just get my voice, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 12 and 13. So Elijah is running away from Jezebel. He's been fed by the angel uh, by, with supernatural bread, and then... Uh, the Lord, he, he's, he's seeking the Lord. He needs to hear. Lord, where am I running? I'm running away, but to where am I running? And can I have some purpose in my life? Tell me what my purpose is. Verse 11 of chapter 19. And he said, uh, it is uh, uh, Elijah speaking. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. The angel saying, is speaking. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains. And break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was, and it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice. Unto him. And said, what do is thou here, Elijah? Let's just read that portion of Scripture. There are many winds in, in, this, in this world, earthquakes, fires. And we try and hear His voice in the midst of all of that. And God says, wrap all your senses close them close your eyes close your ears that's the only reason why we close our eyes it's not because you, you cannot op uh, pray with eyes open you just close your eyes to to cut off some of the senses so that you can try and focus and hear the lord's voice so he says to elijah close uh, uh, wrap yourself and a still small voice. Still small voice. Still small voice. Now, what is this still small voice? Let me just say to you, in the Hebrew, what it means. This word still means calm, silent. Have you ever, ever heard a silent voice? It's when everything becomes silent in you, in the midst of the storms, and you become calm, and it means to quiet self, that's very important. To be able to hear his voice, self needs to be quiet, quietened. That's the word. Quieted. How do we quiet self? By laying down self. Tell him to shut up. To crucify self. To put down your ideas. Put to, put to, to confess your desires and what 
your voice is telling you to quiet self and it means to rest now on the other chart chart that I'm, I'm putting together I'm trying to show you on the chart here how many times the word and the letter means because these are words there are words although they are a letter there are words Alef, Bet, Gimel, Dalet. So a word consists out of letters, but it actually consists out of words. So you have a whole sentence within a word, explaining to you what the word is about. I'm simplifying it, but that's the basics of it. So we find rest as the gospel, as, as you expose yourself and have to do with the gospel of God, you find that you find here, if you allow these principles and you pray that these principles work in you, you come to the place of Zayen, the, the place of the sword and the truth and nourishment, you find rest. The only way that you will be able to find rest, the only way that I will be able to find rest, is if I take the truth and I start using the truth as a weapon of defense and offense and silencing the stranger's voice, many voices, influences. I find rest, next rest, at Chet. How do I find rest? When I take the Word of God and I enwrap myself in the Word of God. This is how, how, how I build the walls of my house. So it become El Bethel, God of the, uh, God of the house of God, me. Okay. Then the next place that I find rest is I find rest as I continue to follow the Lord and continue to pray about these principles. I become, I get a tzamech. Tzamech. And that is when I find rest when I remind myself because it talks about memory. Did I write it here? Near. Yeah. Memory. When I start uh, remembering Remembering the word. Remember what the word says. Holding on to it. It brings rest. All of this quieting, stilling, quieting, self, and becoming still. I learn about rest when I come to study. As this ancient picture shows, resting. Resting upon it. Resting upon his Righteousness. His justification. Because when we come here, we realize that I need, it's only His justification that has brought me thus far. So I learned to rest upon Him. And a tough, can you see this from there? The bottom line. Okay. I can't pick it up. Okay. Tough is where I find rest. Because it's here where I find perfection. Where I lay down self once again and, uh, and ask His will to rule in my life. When I give you these studies, I actually give you some mirrorness for the I don't know whether you realize it's an ant heap that I'm actually scratching open for you. Because what I've been saying Listen to what I'm saying. I can't clarify and highlight everything that I'm saying. I'm saying a lot of things. You must hear what I'm saying. You can use this to guide you in your prayer. You can pray about His sovereignty. That He is sovereign. Bring Him into your situation. Amen.
ask Him that He will live inside of you, that you will create a house for Him with your habits, the way of thinking. You're actually act either cultivating and, and, and making yourself a place where His Spirit can find a place to dwell in. Okay, and that way you can pray about everything. You can, it can take you days to pray through, through every principle that you see. You, that can for you structure here in your gebed. Right. So, the still small voice comes when I allow his word to bring self at rest, to calm yourself down. When I'm excited or confused or angry, I go and sit down in my study or I, wherever I am and I start remembering the principles, the work of God, the word of God that he is sovereign, and so on. Whew. Bring everything to a stop. The small voice, what does the small mean? It's the word dak, D-A-K. It means crushed, doubly small. We find that word on the atonement day when the Lord said, the incense need to be made double small. The ingredients of the incense had to be made powder, but doubly more, doubly small. So God, in the situation that you are in, will use that to make you doubly small, smaller than you've been. Allow the Lord to make you small. All of us are in different forms of crises. Allow the crisis to make you smaller than you've been. By bending your knee, acknowledging his sovereignty. Getting to rest. Quiet down. Because his voice will only come that way to you and me. That word voice, the voice, the word, the word call. You can spell it this way, spelling it for those that can identify the Hebrew. I'm just writing to you the ancient one. Vo. And then on the mat. As I said, it always speaks two ways. It speaks of God and it speaks of what your and my attitude must be so that God can speak. I need to separate myself from the world, worldliness, selfishness, self, my own desires. When I hear his voice, he comes and he separates me from it. Okay? It brings surety with me. And I need the word of God. I need. It. If you hear talk about the voice of God, you will always need the word. That will direct you and me. Many times when we speak, when we drink coffee together, I share with her and she, she, she says to me, you should, have, you should say that at, at church to the people. I say to her, I'm saying it now. I won't remember what I'm saying now. I'm too much in a rush to explain all of this. You need to go home and, and, and get yourself to go back 
and see the implication of this. Can you sum it up, Kim? All right. But we can, you and I cannot hear the voice of God. That's what, that is what makes me so anxious if I hear about so many teachings in the Christian world. If they miss God's sovereignty, they miss everything. Can I put it any plainer than that? They can have everything else right. But if they miss the sovereignty, they are missing Him. When I hear about the voice of God and people prophesying, and I know them, and I know that they've got a problem with the sovereignty of, of God, what voice are they all uh, talking about? It's scary. To me, it's scary. I've been serving the Lord 40 years. And I've seen many, 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 many corpses on the way. I've walked through many manned lines, uh, landmines. I've been through many bush walls. It's not a game, this walk. It's a war. Now, don't think Christians realize that there's a war waging. There's a terrible war going on for your soul. And it's very important to know the voice of your commander. If you, conform, if you confuse his voice with, with the voice of the enemy, it's gone. Gone with you. We need to be very specific. Because the word is his thoughts in ordinary patterns and designs. And people get entangled in the patterns and the designs and they do not meet the architect himself. This book is magnificently put together architecturally. I can tell you about else codes. I can tell you about theomatics. I can tell you about the designs in this Bible that will raise your hair and even let them fall out. This is a fantastic book. But in the midst of this book is the fantastic one. The champion. The commander of the heavenly armies. And we need to hear his voice. We need to discern his voice and follow his voice. Not your own voice. Not the voice of your own desires. And when we talk about this word, the voice, the word, the voice, his voice, I said to you last week, it means the sound of a person. And that sound is like a musical instrument. Your ear must be circumcised to hear whether the, vo the voice is on tune. On that other chart, I've, I've stipulated here where your senses come in. Like for instance, at the cough, that is where your ear is specifically addressed. Because you and I cannot hear His voice if something has not happened with our ear. Our ear needs to be taken to the doorpost of the master of the house. But willingly, you and I need willingly to, to go to the doorpost of the master of the house and ask him once again to put his, what is it else? In English, that sharp thing that you pierce the ear with. Uh, uh, all. 
AWL, I think. To pierce your ear so that your blood can be on his doorpost and mingle with the blood of the Lamb. Our ears are very important, but we're not talking about our ears today. Okay. Because there's a specific tune, a specific frequency. A specific tune that his voice makes that we need to learn. That day when that farmer said to me, if that lamb had only bleated, I would have found it. Many years ago, I gave a message on the 12 sounds that the Bible talks about. I can scream with my, with my lips to him, and I can just be, what, whatever, exhausting myself. If my heart doesn't scream or bleat, bleat like a lamb bleats for his mother, we hear it here with the lambs. Many times in the day, I walk in my office and I hear, ah, 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 and I walk out because I know there's a problem somewhere. The lamb cannot find a mother. Or it's caught somewhere. But there's, a, there's some problem. The ear of the shepherd. I can be working in my office and not being aware of what's going on around me. But the moment that that lamb screams, I jump up. Learn to bleed. He knows your voice, but he knows the voice of a bleating lamb. This word is associated and belongs to the word ur. Spelled this way. Ayen. Vo, resh. Do you see that resh comes every year and there we find resh? How important your reasoning is. And how easily your reasoning gets you off the rails. Because your reasoning is only legitimized if you take it back to Aleph, to the Sovereign One. You are not allowed to think what you want to think. You must take your reasoning to His feet. Protect the theory it is. I can't say anything else, but I have to hear all the good things that we will come to us. So our reasoning you are not allowed to think what you want to think about your position, about the situation. Take your reason and acknowledge his sovereignty. That he is in control. That he that they do upper As I say, I'm trying to show you everywhere we find reasoning is involved. But the, the, every time it is at the end, it is actually the result of the beginning. The result of a beginning. The result of a beginning. So what must we allow our reason to be affected by? By the principle that he is sovereign. By the principle that you are poor. You need to hear his voice. By the principle that you see, that you focus on the truth. Then only will your and my reasoning be affected. You see how your reasoning is affected. How it must be affected. How it must be affected. I can if you say, who feel don't see any work here and you see what you see. The end of the point of the it is a secret result. The end of the point of the secret point and the fall and it is a secret result. Begin, begin, and a secret result. Can you see? 
All right. The Lord says to me many times, can you say? I say, yes, I can see. He says, you can't see. Pray that you will see. Do, do, but just speak loud so that we can pick it up here. Yes. You see, that's what I want you to do. Come here, come and show me here. Come here, Karadu. Just show, say that again, because... Show here. Come here. I'm sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm going to stand close to you to pick it up here. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's very clear. So, Dalet. You're talking about this? I'm talking about this Dalet. Dalet. Okay. Davar. Davar is what you have there. Sorry, I'm interrupting no, you. No, it's not. Davar is the Bible that you have. An arrangement of words, a pattern, a design that you have. But within it, there is living information who is his voice, who is him. So he's talking about that. So, look here. so it, you wrote Dalet, Bet, and Re, correct? Yes. That's what you wrote. Not me, you wrote it. Yes. All right. Yes. So, God did. Yes. Dalet, if we look here, transformed by event. All right, so be there. God's word dwell is correct. Yes. And then the supremacy of faith over human reasoning and logic as a result of having followed the path of the previous lesson. So let's read again. Transformed by them, by the God, by God's word dwelling in us. You know, and then you're going to have supremacy over any human logic and reasoning. That's it. <laughs> Does he? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Now he's just done what I'm trying to say here. No, I Sometimes uh, when, uh, when we speak, I usually say to a uh, it sounds that I'm always the one that can uh, talk more than my wife. But when it comes to explaining something, my, it's like my words dry up. So Claudio has just done here what I'm trying to say to you. He took this, put it into motion with those explanations there, and he had a whole story. Just by looking at Davar. I've been explaining to you Davar, I've been explaining Omar, I've tried to explain quiet and small and voice to you. And you can do that with everyone and have a whole message. Living, jumping, embracing you with more understanding so that you can understand what God is really saying. Every letter Jesus said, every yut, yut, those three yuts, yut, and tittle. The tittle, he says, will not disappear before the word has been fulfilled. So even the tittle, we haven't even talked about the tittle. Like, for instance, in Psalm 91, people write it on the back of their cars. Psalm 91, he who dwells among, under the shadow of the Almighty, and so on and so on. They say, they, the rabbis sit and they say, Oh, we use this when we do exorcism and we try and, do, uh, and uh, chase away the demons and the spirits. They say, but nowhere in that whole psalm, Psalm 91, there's no Zayen, which is the weapon. Why is it so, brothers? And they sit and they sit and they sit and they sit. They say, oh, every, about every letter has got a Zayen on it. 
So the demons and the spirits and, the, and so on flees away and flies away and run away because there's a Zion in ev about every letter. There is a Zion, there is a Zion, there is a Zion, there is a Zion, there is a Zion. And the spirit world identifies the Zion in e on every, on every, so uh, uh, on about every letter. And that causes them to, f to run uh, backwards and fall backwards and run away. Maak het sin wat ek probeer sê. Kom ek by die punt uit. <laughs> Alright. So every little mark of every little letter like my brother was doing it now. Affects you. Because what we need, we need to reboot our whole system. The only way we can reboot it is by studying the Word of God, reading the Word. The only that way we can calibrate our whole being so that we can hear the voice by studying the Word, reading the Word. Because what we need to do is we need to do that so that when we hear the voices of which there are many, the true voice will resonate with you because you have been calibrated and you are calibrating yourself so that you can know it's not that one, not that one, it's this voice. This is the way I should go. Ur. Let me write to you, let me speak to you about Ur. Because you see Ur you cannot separate from, how do you pronounce this? Kol. Ur and Kol are brothers. You cannot separate them. Okay. So, what does Ur talk about? Ur actually precedes Kol. Not actually, he does. Okay. So, what does it talk about? What does Ur talk about? Let me read to you from the ancient Hebrew lexicon. When an enemy is captured, he is stripped of his clothes. He is stripped to the skin and carefully watched and inspected. So we're talking about hearing his voice. We're talking about an enemy that dwells within, in, within your walls. Talking about self, your ego, your pride, your carnal nature, your old nature, inside of you. As you read the word, and as you listen to the word, the inspired word being preached, the truth being preached, you must allow yourself and strip self through repentance, through thinking the right way, bring yourself back to his sovereignty. In that way, we strip ourselves, we strip self. We strip the enemy of his armory and his clothes so that his nakedness can appear. Because of his nakedness appear. What is the word that actually follows? This is number one. How would you pronounce that? Or, let me, uh, let me, uh, did I write it down here, the Hebrew down here for it? Let me write the word down. It is Aleph. Vo. And of course, once again, Resh. Or. Thank you. Right. This word means illumination. Illumination is... Now, if you want the lights to, go, to come on, and you want to hear his voice, because that is what his voice does. 
Yesterday, my wife thought there was a problem with me. I was walking like down like around like this. I was unrestful. I tried first, but I didn't seem to communicate. I went to do my study again. Sat. I was waiting for that. This morning I stood up early and went. Suddenly, boom, boom. The lights went on for me. Because God works with your reasoning. My reason must be affected. This is the result. And I return in my thinking. I return to the beginning. He is the beginning of everything. All things are one day going to be returned to his feet. The sun is going to bring all things. Lay them down before. I've got a choice now to return all things to his feet. All things, you understand when I say all things, in your little world, my little world. Okay? So my reasoning, aura, aura, the light goes on for you, or the aura, the light doesn't go on for you. All right. Bing, 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 bong. Another way of saying the light went on for you is that you hear his voice. And you know by experience. And I know by experience. When his voice comes on, suddenly you, you know with, with his voice that you hear, you hear much more than just a voice. A lot of things happen just with a voice going on. Suddenly you understand many things. They didn't understand before. Because this word or means luminous. It means, according to the dictionary, literal and metaphysical. That's the words they use. Literal and meta metaphysical. When Jesus said, I am the light of the world, that is the word that he used. So voice and light, the light to be put on, is exactly the same. It means your understanding. Suddenly you've got understanding. Something has happened. Something has gone on for you. Suddenly you realize. So the voice, listen to what I'm saying, the voice comes through instruction and through teaching. I'm a I met Christians this week in our daughter's shop. Ah, um, kuur van um, After a few minutes, he prophesied. Did he did Right. I said to him, "Where do you fellowship?" Near um, fellowship near. I'm sure, I'm sure, 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 sure. You need instruction, you need teaching. So from there you can hear his voice. Not call things prophecy, but it's not prophecy. Not call things and God said and God didn't say. Let's go to John chapter 10. I think the danger in Christianity is because when somebody gets saved, we get a boldness with that. And many times what I find is that people say, and one of our own family members has said to me, I don't need teaching. 
I know him. I said, yes, but what is your occupation? You're a doctor. I can tell you things from God's word that you do not know. Don't you want to know it? Can you be so stupid to deprive yourself? The Lord has put many out many, many, what, 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 what should we call it? Roles? I don't want to call it ministries because I don't like that word. But God has given each one of us a specific gift. And if we put that together, we have a body of Christ. Because we need one another. John chapter 1. Uh, so chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, verily. Definitely, definitely, surely, surely. Absolutely, absolutely. I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door, the door, the door, Dalet. He is Dalet. He is the door. Okay. Here he speaks two messages in one. Okay. I need to enter through the door. He needs to enter through me, through me if I acknowledge that I'm poor. And he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name. He calleth his own sheep by name. So... Amen? When he talks here about the fold, he says, there is a fold. I'm drawing it specifically square, but let's not go on to it. There is a fold. God's fold. God's theory. God's word. Preaching. Teaching. Instruction. Instruction. When you and I have received instruction, you haven't done it yet. You've only received it. You heard it. Then you need, and you are called to the gate, wherever the gate is. By what? By whom? The Holy Spirit Himself calls you and me. The Holy Spirit Himself. He cries in the wilderness. He cries. He cries. He talks to you and me. He cries and he speaks your name. Peter. It's time for you to practice the instruction that you have received. Here is your situation. Come here. Do what you've been told. Follow me. I will take you through it. Follow my voice. So when you and I are reading your word, the Bible, studying, sitting in church, sitting at home, studying the word of God, uh, receiving teaching and instruction, God miraculously calls you to a specific situation, to a specific situation but he says my son Peter it's time to practice what you have received he calls you out by name each one of us are receiving this morning one message consisting out of a diversity of messages each one of you are receiving something specifically that you need The Spirit of God is already calling you to the experimental side of this that you've received. He will get you there. In verse 3, when he says, He calls us, each one, by name. That word called means encounter. The one that you, got in, that you encountered when you got saved. That voice has never changed. 
The same voice that called you to repentance initially is the same voice that is calling you today out of the fold into practice, into the field. He says then what happens? He leadeth them and his sheep follow. The word lead in chapter 3 and verse 3, the word lead and the word follow, verse 4 says, and when he putteth forth, you see he says, he putteth forth his own sheep. That means, putteth forth means if he forces you. He pushes you out. He puts you into a situation that you didn't necessarily ask for. He forces you into a situation. Most situations in my life I didn't ask for. I definitely wouldn't have asked for it. <laughs> that wasn't on my, on my prayer list. Lord, please put me in this situation where it's really hard. No. My, my, my list usually says, Lord, please be, be careful with me. And the Lord must say, the Lord must not be careful with me. And the Lord must go to you. And the situation that I just said, I'm going to go. Trying to swim, learning to swim. After a while you can swim. When you've pleated. Okay. So. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. Okay. So that word called leaders. He leaders them. And the word they follow. Do you know what is the basic word they say there? I left. On a very, 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 if you go down to the very bare word. Okay, I left. So when he says, he leads them, how does he lead them? In my being pushed out, being put into a situation, I must remember one thing, he's sovereign. That's all you need to know. He's sovereign, he's in control. Although Aleph is a silent letter. Why is silent? Any time. But we've learned that his voice means silent. For 10 years I've worked with addicts. And one guy was a Berghi. He knows of the Berghis of Kaita. Berghi, a long beard. He was a dacha smoker. A very faithful dacha smoker. His culture, his thinking, everything was, was boom. And he went into the mountains to harvest his own organic dacha. He said to me one day, I spoke to God to him a lot about, he said to me, you know what? You will start talking sense when you sit down, nature, you listen, nature talking to you. And he was right in one sense. He was right in one sense. I challenge you, go and sit down here on a chair with no transistor key, no radio with you. Go and sit down in your garden where you live. Sit down. Cut off all other sounds, all other focuses. Wrap yourself in your mantle. And then you will hear God's voice. In the stones, He will speak to you. If. Where's the other one? Focus your reasoning on. I left. I said, the word means lead. The basic word is I left. So, how can he lead you? He can lead you if your reasoning is focused on him. That's the sovereign one. In your reasoning, if you seek out every time to acknowledge that he is as I said to a black man the other day, he says, what are you doing? 
I say, I'm a Maruti, but Maruti, I know it's not a good, right, the right, really the right word. I said, Do you know Umkulu? He says, Yes, I know Umkulu. I said, I'm talking about Umkulu Kulu. That's the one I'm talking about. Because I know among the Zulus, you've got Umkulu, Umkulu. But you've got Umkulu, Umkulu means big one, above the big one, the most big one. So when I'm talking about Umkulu, I'm not talking about your ego. I'm talking about Mkulu Mkulu, the one much greater than your ego, my ego, my reasoning. He will lead me if I get to that principle. And then I will be following him. Do you see? Talking about his voice. You can't get away. From Aleph. If you've got an extra pen somewhere with colors, I like colors. Now, if I do different colors, maybe you can see it easier. I, don't, I think so. Okay. Okay. There's enemies of his voice. Distortions. We, with our little transistor key, our little radio, this big, we need to tune it exactly on the right medium wave. Uh, so, so not medium wave, on the, exactly the right um, wavelength. wavelength is a better word. Thank you, frequency. And then you need to turn the radio at a certain place. You need to turn that way around and put the aerial flat. Other places you need to put it that way around and put the aerial, aerial right up. So even then, even there, you have to have your direction corrected and right to hear his voice. Here in verse 8 and 9, he says, all that are ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out in, he shall go in, he shall go in, read his Bible, the free teaching and instruction, and go out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This is a favorite verse here. Very favorite in the Christian church. Very, very favorite. <laughs> I'm sarcastic. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, I am come. Why did he come? He says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Right, so what does he say here? What are the thieves and the robbers? What do they do? What do they steal? What do they rob? What does this whole verse and what is this whole chapter about? This whole chapter is about his voice, his sheep, the shepherd, the fold. But the, the, the thrust of the whole teaching is to hear his voice. Then he says, there are thieves and there are robbers. He says, all that are ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. What do the sheep and the robbers do? Do they steal the sheep with their wool? Or do they steal the wool of the sheep? Or do they steal the meat of the sheep? No, they steal away the voice of the shepherd. They fake his voice. They distort the shepherd's voice. They try and take the sheep away from Derek, from living a purposeful life, away from God's will. That's what they steal. It's got nothing to do about their material worth or their material possessions. Sheep don't own anything outside of the wool that they have and the meat that they have on them. 
Okay. So, verse 10 says here, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And that word, let me just write, uh, say to you, that word, uh, where did I write it down? Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. I don't know where. Oh, my, my, my time. But I, he says, He came that they, that they, the sheep, may have life and may have it, so it refers to the life, more abundantly. What is this word life? Because I think that's where the confusion lies. When they talk about life, they talk about cars and houses and money and possessions and material stuff. He says, in the same verse where he says, the thief come not but to fall to steal, to kill and to destroy. I, double punt, what's double punt the English? Colon there, in the middle of verse 10, when he says, the thief cometh to steal, to kill and to destroy. Colon, not the end of what he was saying. He's still saying, he's still explaining. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now that word life is spelled with a chet and a yut. That word life. A chet, chet, and a yut, a chet, and a yut. My dear brother Claudio, you've put your finger here. All right. My question is, chet. What about life does it speak about? What I wrote here. It talks about a higher plane of existence. And it talks about life abundant. All right. That's why the Lord says, and it more abundantly. Did you see it says there, verse 10? That they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. Get. Now, I wrote it somewhere, somewhere, but anyway. Get. If he, the Hebrew is written down very meticulously, and they use specific letter settings, letter styles, they even differentiate here. Right, with chet. chet. They say you find physical. When they talk about physical life, they say chet is written this way. Then they say, if they talk about soul, soulish life, chet is written this way. Is a yen with a vault. And then they say, when God was specifically talking not about the physical life, uh, when the word life is spoken, uh, is written, so when, when, the, when the message, when the word specifically, when God specifically talks about physical life, the Style, this style was used. When life was referring to soulish life, this chet was used. When spirit life was talked about, it was written this way, with the two yazayens touching one another, That way. Right, so what are we saying? The Lord speaks specifically here. He says, I've come the day that we, us, might, ha might, might have life. He's not using and speaking about physical life. 
is not you talking about having abundance of physical, material stuff. He specifically used in, in the different scrolls and styles that they write, they talk about soulish and spiritual life. When that word life is, for starting with the when that word life is spelt, and they want to be very specific, they use soulish, this chet, or that chet. So, he wants us to have abundant soulish and spiritual life. So the thieves and the robbers refers to them that wants to steal away your, your soulish and spiritual abundance or life. I mean, am I speaking sense? I mean, okay. And further on, life, life. Because we know that Hebrew is not like Greek. Hebrew is a very concrete language. Greek is very philosophizing and in your mind and relative and, and so on. Abstract. Hebrew is very concrete. So, when they talk about life, they say, a full stomach is life. But of that, do you not understand? At the moment I'm standing here, I'm dying. I'm hungry. <laughs> that is as specifically and directly as Hebrew is. So I'm telling you I'm dying. Okay. So We now, if we put it together to understand what the Lord is saying to us, <laughs> So what is the message? The message is, if your spiritual stomach is craving and dying, you need to fill it so that you can have life and life more abundant. The thieves and the robbers come to steal away substance that will fill your stomach. So you as a sheep will die. When we do not follow the voice, or let's say, when they steal away or distort the voice, that's how a sheep dies. Ask me. There are two vets. A sheep die easy. I've got the rule here when Heinrich first met me. I said to him, you know, Heinrich, I never call out the vet when a sheep or a, or a goat is dead. It cost me too much money, uh, uh, sick. It cost me too much money. And so I usually put the knife down there and I say, you must decide whether you are sick or whether you can get right. I've helped you as far as I can and you're not going to last long. Then, because I can't see you, uh, what's it? Waning. Waning. The moment the sheep start waning, difficult to learn. A, a good a vet can do that. But the vet is very, very good. <laughs> but the vet will tell you as well, yes, a scalp is pieper, a scalp is for gaan kwijn. Moet jy vinnig spring, en as jy nie, jy moet, jy krij nie soma nie lewe weer. Het het ook te doen met roemen. Het is scalp ook, het is ook van roemen en scalp. Oké. Okay. Die rumen en die skaap is die micro-organismes wat help om die plantmateriaal en alles af te breek en die skaap te tens. Oké. Okay. As dit eers versteer is, trek hy. Oké. Okay. Dat is baie maarskaap. Baie. Dat denk hulle gaan maak. Een maarskaap. Maak het gewoon. 
maatskap is maat. Want die goeie herd, the good shepherd takes us to pastures, green pastures, abundant so the sheep can have their stomachs full so their soulish and spiritual lives can boom, boom be abundant so the stealing and the killing and the destroying has got nothing to do nothing to do with the sheep anything but less it is in the same verse, it is one sentence, one principle that the Lord is talking here about. And amen, 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 amen. Stranger. I don't think I've spelled the word stranger to you. You find the word stranger there. He says there in verse 5, they do not follow the stranger. I have found that sheep, his sheep, these days, they like the strangers. They like the strangers. They try, they try and follow them. Because they do not know what life is about. How is the stranger? What is a stranger? A stranger, of course, will be spelled with our left. In a head. Sorry, I'm not putting them into proportion. Just trying to press them in the space I have here. And of course it will be a resh. Because I showed you just now how important the resh your thinking is. I showed you how important Aleph is, the principle of Aleph is. So if it's a stranger, of course the stranger will come through the principles of, of, of Aleph, of Chet, and of, of, shen, of, of uh, resh. Stranger there in verse 5, he says, And the, stranger, the strangers they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of the stranger. I have found that Christians these days like the stranger's voice. Because they do not like and they, do not, they reject the whole sovereignty principle. Either their doctrine says that they are in control and they must get into control, or that the devil is in control over the planet and over the earth. He's in control. He's here to kill, to steal, to steal and to destroy. They say, they say, they say. And they've got a, they do not understand the whole head principle. They say the head is uh, physical, material. They do not realize it is truth that is the fence around you. And they say that whatever they think, whatever pictures they see, whatever pictures they see is a prophecy. And they are seeing what God's saying. Well, it's not God's saying because their reasoning and their pictures is not connected to Him as the Sovereign One. So is een groot gemors. Because the stranger will come and the stranger will tell you, God is not in control. You are in control. Some doctrines say that. Don't cry because you haven't taken control. You must take control. And, and, uh, and you personally, you fight the demons and the spirits and whatever. And the fence around you it's not really the truth. This is the truth. Well, when you listen to the contents of what they're saying, it is not truth. It's not a fence. And then they tell you how they think. But the thinking is not connected to the Aleph. Because re remember here, when understanding stranger, you must put the word not. So, it's not Aleph. It is not chet as the word says, it's not resh as the word says. You understand? Anders dit dink jylle maar, jy Hoe kree dit reg? Right, 
So the problem that, that uh, last night, literally, literally, I'm telling you, uh, I'm giving you a snap of uh, news. Last night, there were strangers on our premises. They cut the, the slot. The lock. They cut the lock. They went into the barn. They were among our, our goats. They cut some other stuff. And they did some other stuff. But you know what? They cannot cut these things. Nothing has changed of God being sovereign. They didn't get into my mind, into my thinking. Windows. My thinking <coughs> is connected to Aleph. I choose to do that. So the thieves and the robbers and the, and the wolves, yes, the word wolf, in verse 12, he says there, but he that is a hireling, they are the hirelings. You get a shepherd and you get a hireling in the church of God. The hireling is paid wages. The sheep is part of the business. It's not part of the farming. It's not part of the the herd. It's just business. So a hireling is actually doing business with the sheep. And then you get a shepherd. So a hireling is not connected to a left. Therefore, the voice of the hireling is not trustworthy. Then, then in verse 10 he says, Thief, uh, sorry, sorry, what did I say? Verse 12. He that is an hireling is not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not. Seeth, uh, seeth the wolf coming, and, and, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. Okay. What does the word wolf mean? No, no, Claudio and I mean, they like wolves, because they come there from Europe, and northern Europe, wolves are fascinating animals, wonderful animals. But if you talk about a wolf in, in the Christian environment and in spiritual environment, that word wolf means, in the Greek, white light. So a wolf comes at, as a servant of light. But a wolf wounds and hurts and destroys the sheep. He eats up the sheep. The sheep is a commodity. Eat them up. So we find enemies of his voice, thieves, robbers, hirelings, wolves, strangers. To do what? What do they do? They are there so the sheep will lose the way. They are there and they do so that the sheep will lose purpose. You, you hear what I'm saying? We are addressing, we are addressing very uh, relevant matters. Because I know most of you come to points in your occupation where you feel purposeless. Your purpose is not working at the bank. That's not your purpose. Your purpose is not working as a constructor. Your purpose is not working as a vet or as a computer boffin or whatever or as an engineer or as a pastor. That is not our purpose. Those are activities that God has placed you where you and I need to reveal His nature and His character. No amens? I'll say amen. What do these things do? These enemies, they come to take away the quality of life. What is quality of life? Solis and spiritual abundance. No amens? Amen. What do they come and steal? They come and steal from you so that you end up with an empty stomach. 
A sheep with an empty stomach has got a great possibility of dying. Most Christians that I know that died on the way didn't plan to die. They didn't sit down and say, let's turn away from God. They just started eating the wrong stuff. That's all. Start eating the wrong stuff in your mind, and that's a sure way of dying. It's like when somebody commits suicide, usually at the very moment that they realize they are, they're going to die now, they try usually try and get out of it. When a sheep has lost its rumen, or its rumen is not effective, it dies even though it realizes that they are dying. Because even a good vet most of the times cannot get a sheep back on its feet to live. If you fill yourself with a message of the TV, and with all the many, 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 many ways that the TV keeps us busy, it will affect your reasoning, will take your reasoning, sever your reasoning from him as a sovereign one. What will happen? Your soulless and spiritual life will die down and you will not hear his voice. Because your focus Where's focus? That's right. Donkey. Mm. Focus, focus. <laughs> because your focus and my focus are distorted. What are you focusing on? On your problem? Or on Aleph? You alone can answer that. And if you don't know what to answer, what are you keeping your mind busy with? Is your mind fold with your problem? You're going to die. Can I say plain, more plainly than that? Is, and I'm not saying that we mustn't be responsible. Be responsible. But at the feet of our left. The difference. Okay? People end up not being satisfied. Not being satisfied, they say, by the word of God anymore. But they are lying. They've been deceived. Because what they've been eating and putting along with what they are eating was poisonous. I lost my ram that we paid for and then, just after that, we lost our big, the big, petgemaakte uh, hamel, the one that we were going to slaughter the next day. We lost. Because they got the wrong food? No. They got very nice, good food. But there was too much urea in it. Which is good. It stimulates growth. So oh, the mixture was a little bit wrong for sheep. Jij zei hier die vis en spoeg hier die graten. Pas op, is elke eer te vol graten. Oké. Okay. Because Christians have been saying to us, no, no. They know this is wrong, that doctrine is wrong, that one is wrong. But they sit there because at least they get something and they spit out all the bones. If most of your meal is just spitting and spitting and spitting and spitting bones out, be careful. A day is coming where you're going to swallow a bone and then suffocate. Right. That is the message that we need to hear today. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. After that, I'm going to ask your comments.
Lord, you are the great shepherd. You walk and minister with your staff. Lamet. To guide, to teach, to instruct. To call your sheep, to green pastures, and living water. And as you have warned us, there are many strangers, hirelings, wolves, many voices. You said your sheep will not follow them. We stand here while the wolves are howling. Many deceptions on the way. You said your sheep will know your voice as they come forth from the fold. Work in us, Lord, that we will stand together, pray together, study together in the fold, where we have the safety of the fence of truth. Building our own fences. But when you call us out into experience, sometimes you put us forth that we will have our system rebooted, calibrated, so that our whole being can resonate with the tune of your voice, knowing the melody and the sound of truth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.